if you look up on the top of that hill there, okay, at the very top of that hill, that's the border of our property. Morning, everybody. Chad here. It's so cold today. Holy smokes. The thermostat, like, I don't even need to show it to you guys because it's not even registering at all. It's like, it doesn't even go. It's a made in England thermostat and it doesn't even go all the way down. That's crazy. Molly's here with me. Look, she just came in my workshop. Where'd she go? Right there. So I got Stormy in the car. Just going to get set up here and uh, got a few things to go through today. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in to this episode. Chronicles of a Farm Stay Startup here at the Hidden Spring Farm. Oh, it's going to be a good day here in the farm. Got some snow clearing to do. Got to check those chickens. Got to check those ducks. The ducks water's been frozen the past couple days. So, I mean really frozen solid. Like I got to tip the, the pan over and kick it just to get the ice out. Going to give Stormy some uh, snow time today. Because, uh, you know, I don't want her to be completely shocked the next time she sees snow. She is going to be living in the barn eventually. Also going to talk to you guys a little bit. Well, when I say talk to you, I kind of mean rant a little bit about these clowns that have been fooling around on my property. <sighs> but uh, Molly's going to have fun today, I guess. Molly's right there. Look, oops, she's taking a dump. Sorry, folks. I didn't realize. Probably gonna work on my barn cat barn today too. I brought some uh, paint with me and I'm gonna get uh, just a rough coat of paint and uh, after the paint's done I'll be able to put some finishing touches on and then she'll be done. Those roosters aren't stopping. Non-stop crowing and they're all doing it in unison. They all do it at the same time. They're so funny. Having 11 roosters isn't all that bad, you know, as long as they're not fighting. It's like music to my ears. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching this episode. Hope you enjoy it. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you like what we're doing here at the Hidden Spring Farm. Got a lot of big plans this year. Starting a farm stay. That's what this channel is all about. Farm stay vacation rental. So it's going to be an operating farm and an operating vacation rental. We've been pretty busy since last August. We can just continue that trend into this year. Got huge plans. Anyways, don't forget to leave some comments in there. I love when you guys comment. I get to know you guys a little bit, you know? You guys get to know me a little bit because you're watching me on YouTube. For any of you people who are just catching this episode, we're a relatively new channel. My name's Chad. My wife and I, we bought this property last year and we're slowly transforming it into an amazing and beautiful farm stay and experience. So far, we've got ducklings and raised them to ducks, chicks and raised them to chickens. We got Molly, the farm dog. She's an old English sheepdog puppy and she's still a puppy. We got a rescued barn cat now. She's doing really well, Stormy. She's doing really well. And I built a custom ultimate duck house. And if you go back a couple episodes ago, you'll see that uh, I have big plans this year. Challenging plans. I think I can do it. I think I can do it as long as this Ontario COVID lockdown doesn't last too long. Thanks for watching, folks. Enjoy the episode, okay? Let's get right into the good stuff. Molly, come here. Come here. It's so exciting checking for eggs every day. I mean, I knew I was gonna be happy about getting eggs, but I never thought I was gonna be this happy, this proud, you know, this excited all every morning. I'm so proud of my ducks and my chickens. Good times. I see there's a couple eggs on the ground. See, there's a couple eggs on the ground. Molly's not touching it, so my training's working. 
I see that there's an egg right there in the nest. No eggs under there. No eggs under there. Oh, but there's a bunch of eggs in here. There's a bunch of eggs in here. Look, guys. One, two, three. Where else? Looks like we got six duck eggs today, guys. We're gonna head out into the run quickly and see if they dropped any out there. A quick look at the run here. I'm not seeing anything. How you doing, ducks? Quite astonishing, you know, that the the ducks don't really seem to mind the cold, and they don't seem to mind the snow. And I mean, if you look at their feet, right? You know, that's like they have no meat on them. It seems like it's just bone, a little bit of like tendons and muscles, and then like skin. It's a miracle that the feet don't really get frozen. Nature's so amazing, honestly, how these everything survives. Like us humans, for example. Like, what the heck? We got bones, we got skin, we got tendons and muscles, but our feet, if we had bare feet, our feet would freeze in no time. So cool. Let's go check these chickens. One. I see two. And I see a chicken sitting on some right there. You see that chicken? I was just about to go into this door to go into where I keep my chickens. And look at this. I probably would have crushed these eggs. Look. Look at them down there. That one's frozen. That one's frozen. That one looks okay. And there's one there. See that one right there? There's one, there's one right down there. Chickens are really loving these roosts. Okay, let me get in very carefully so I don't crush those eggs. The door, as soon as the door opens, it's going to hit those eggs. Yeah! This one looks beautiful. <laughs> Woohoo! That was all in unison that time, all together now. This one's frozen though. <laughs> you guys are starting to be like a rooster symphony. It's cracked. This one's cracked too. This one's cracked. I guess Molly's gonna get a lot of eggs today because we can't use them. That's not good. This one's cracked too. I guess that's really a, a common occurrence when it gets really cold at night. And it's like so cold in the morning. I don't see any more eggs though, guys. How about their water? Still good? Yeah. Oh, there's an egg down there. See that, guys?
This egg looks okay. Doesn't look cracked. I don't know about you guys. I know you're not supposed to have this many roosters, okay? By my count, we have 11 roosters and 13 hens. And that's just the luck of the draw, you know? Like when, you, when you're getting chicks, they're unsexed. You don't know what you're gonna get when they're babies. But uh, th these, these uh, roosters, like now, they're crowing like crazy. It's like music to my ears, you know? Even though you're not supposed to have this many roosters, but I don't know, I feel like maybe because they grew up together, they're not, they're not fighting too much. Hey, stop pecking up my boots. This must be a good morning though, because they're not stopping. Watch out! Watch out! It's gonna fall on your back! <laughs> These chickens are starting to get so big, eh guys? I mean, they might be pretty close to fully grown by now, I'm not sure. Wanted to just talk to you guys about something quick. It's kind of obviously this is our first year at this 90 acre property that we have, and uh, this is our first winter, so we've never gone through a winter before. Molly, what are you doing? I'm trying to talk to YouTube. What are you doing? Anyways, so our property, if you look up on the top of that hill there. Okay, at the very top of that hill, that's the border of our property. And the other side of the, that property is the Simcoe County Forest. Okay, so it's crown land, it's government, government maintained. It's obviously easier to see in the winter, but we have like hundreds of trespassers on our property. And I have yet to encounter any of them because I'd give them a piece of my mind. Uh, you know, I think the small few of snowmobilers is giving all snowmobilers a bad name, a bad reputation from people like me who are going to complain because people are riding their snowmobiles on my property and they shouldn't be. At the top of that hill, there's a county maintained trail, okay? So why are people going off of the trail? Why are people in their snowmobiles coming down that hill, 
driving all the way around. Look at these tracks right here. They're right here, guys. Right here. Look. So that means that a snowmobile came down that hill. That hill is my property. Snowmobile came down that hill. Look at all the tracks. They're all over the place. You guys may not be able to pick it up in the camera, I'm sorry. But I'm just walking right here because there's a track right here. Snowmobile track. Look. It's right here. Look, I'm standing in it. I'm standing in the track. So it's pretty unbelievable that somebody can be screwing around on my property. They don't know what kind of a crop I have in here. They don't know if I have some, you know, delicate shrubs that you can't be driving over. They don't know if I have livestock in these fields. Maybe they're going to freak out my, my emu or my horses or my cattle. That's, to me, that's just completely unacceptable. I mean, as soon as, as soon as they start, as soon as they start driving down that hill, even if they made a mistake and said, whoops. So as, as soon as they start driving down the hill, you can see my ultimate duck house. You can see the ultimate duck house. You can see my white truck. You can see this chicken coop. You can see the barn. You can see the house. So whoever's coming down here, you know that it's a residential place. You know that it's a farm. And yet these buggers keep going. They keep going. They're all over there. They're all over there. They're all, all the trails are going down to the other end of the property down there. It's almost like they want to drive down here and make their way all the way to the other end, like completely cross in the center of my property. I'm completely blown away. Like I said, this is my first winter in this property. And now, now I feel like at the top of that hill where my property ends, I need to have a fence going all the way across that property so that these trespassers can't come in with their snowmobiles. Imagine I could have Molly could be running around here they're, they're freaking her out. That's no good. That's no good. I'm shocked that people would would do that. But I mean, when I start searching it on the internet about trespassing issues with ATVers, campers, hunters, snowmobilers, it's quite a common occurrence. You know, it's just a little bit frustrating actually, because to me, if I was driving like this on a snowmobile and I just went off the trail and then I saw right away that, oh, there's a house there. This is not the right place to be, guys. This is private property. I would turn around and get out of there. But no, they just keep on going, keep on having fun on my property. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I don't really know what I'm going to do about it at this point. I just thought I'd share my frustration with you guys. I don't know, what do you guys think? What do you guys think we should do about these trespassers? Is this, is this a normal happening? You know, is, is this like a normal thing that happens to all properties wherever they're snowmobiling around? I don't know. Anyways, leave me some comments there and see what you think I should do about it. This is my security system, guys. And you can see the snowmobilers just doing wheelies. Look, Papa wheelies. They're doing stunt driving in my 10 acre hay field. Unbelievable. They're just like, so they're, they're so close to my buildings. They're so close to my animals and they have no, no wherewithal at all just to get out. They don't, they don't even think to themselves, God, this isn't our place, guys. We better get out of here. This is just ridiculous. I'm gonna watch this for a little bit. Look, there's like four or five of them there. One, two, three, four, there's a whole group of them. It's pretty good, eh, guys? It's pretty good that 
You know, I initially had this camera pointed to my future chicken coop that I'm going to build. And this, uh, it, it just picks up everything, even from the field. Honestly, guys, it's clowns like this that give all snowmobilers a bad name. Imagine, I'm going to call the county, see what they can do about it. They, you know, people should be staying on the county trails. They shouldn't be going off on tangents on other people's properties. And then what's the repercussion if they do? There's got to be something. They should be putting fencing up then, even if it's just temporary winter fencing. I shouldn't be the one paying for that. They should be the one paying for that. Arr! Stormy come, Stormy come, look at Stormy guys, Stormy come, let's go, let's go, let's go, come on, come on, come. <laughs> this is winter training for Stormy, come on Stormy, come on. Let's get inside. Come. Come. Stormy, come. Good girl, Stormy. Good girl. That's a little bit of training for Stormy here, guys. She did really good. A little bit of time outside. You can see her shaking her, her paws, eh? She didn't care for the snow too much. But she had a little bit of time with the chickens. She's still scared of the chickens. The chickens started pecking at her. Did you see that? Those bloody chickens, they're so mean. So as you can see guys, I'm just giving a little bit of fresh straw 
here in the duck house because it was getting kind of damp and I'm just doing the, uh, the deep litter method. So you just keep piling it up, a little bit of poop, then you layer a bit of straw on top, a little bit of poop, then you layer a bit of straw on top, or whatever your bedding is. It doesn't have to be straw, but I'm using straw because it seems to be the cheapest and it's very absorbent. So straw, hay, it's available here on my property, so didn't have to uh, go through so much expense. Look at the ducks. They're using the holes that the water bowls made. I filled those up with water, so they're using those also as water bowls. And they're slipping and sliding in there because it's all ice. <laughs> they're so funny, those ducks. Time to bring out the big guns. Okay guys, let's get up here. Check this attic. I got the big bad boy out. Look at the size of this sucker. This is a new trap I got. Oh, what's that sound? Did you hear that? Was that snow coming off the roof or squirrels in the attic? I see a squirrel, guys. I see a squirrel. Hold on. Poor little guy's freaked out. Maybe that's not a squirrel at all. No, it's a squirrel. What's that sound? Do you hear that sound, guys? God, it sounds like something's coming in. Jeez, I'm a little freaked out. Okay, let's get some peanut butter in this bad boy. Because this is now... Oh no, peanut butter's frozen. And then this has to go like this. And that has to go like that. Okay, let's see how this one works. I'm here back at it again, guys. Trying to get up. Oh, the trap is moved. Look. Why is the trap moved? Maybe there's something in there. Let me get my body up in here. I don't see nothing, guys. I feel like something was trapped in here but maybe it got out because there's squirrel poop everywhere like look there's all this squirrel poop and all the insulation is in here look at all that insulation in there jeez Okay, let's see how that works. I got this big trap set again, and I got the small trap set again, and let's check it again tomorrow. Okay guys, I'm inside my workshop. I got the heater going, and I'm gonna get a coat of paint on this barn cap barn. That's uh, the next step, I think, before I put some finer details on her. No! No! 
out. That's not too bad, eh, guys? There's a lot of easier ways to do this. You could roll it, but the look that I'm going for is really rustic and old and kind of a run-down looking barn, you know? So I just want to lightly coat the red color so you can see it's not perfect, right? It's not perfect. There's some of the brown showing through, and, you know, I'm looking, I'm trying just to create uh, a very old, worn-out paint job, you know? Uh, but that bloody stormy she climbed up there. She's gonna get red paint on her paws Might have to put her in her cage while I'm getting this dry Oh, That's what you get for having a kitten on the loose when you're painting Look guys, look, look at her paws. I should know better. This is pretty awesome. It's getting close to the point that I'm gonna be done. I'm just gonna put some finishing touches on it and I gotta put the roof on either side, some more insulation, little hinges so I can open up the door so I can see the cats or clean out their straw bedding or whatever. And then uh, this is good to go. Although Stormy won't be using it right away, but it's good to go whenever I get more cats or whenever Stormy's ready to transition to the barn, so. I'm happy about how it turned out. Anyways, thanks for watching this episode, guys. Really appreciate it, listening to me ranting. Stormy, come on. And uh, please join me on the next episode. It's probably going to be in a few days. And really appreciate you watching. Remember to click that subscribe, pound that like button for me, share it. And uh, please feel free to comment and tell me your thoughts about... Uh, about what's going on with them trespassers, what I should do with them darn guys. Anyways, see you on the next one, guys. Take care.